Good morning, and welcome to 50 Days to Your Pentecost, day two of our 50-day challenge of watching God do something uh, new and special in our lives. Uh, today, I'm thrilled to have my wife, of over 40 years, Anne is with me this morning. But as we get started this morning, let me just say to you, um, if you want to have any of your friends join with you, uh, just send them the link that you received by email and uh, they can join us. Uh, you can join us on Facebook, you can join us by YouTube, uh, or you can join us here on the Zoom link. Either, either of those ways will work and we would love to have you with us. Let's get right into it this morning. Let's uh, dive into the scripture, Isaiah 35, verse 8. I'm reading from the English Standard Version, and it says, The voice of one crying uh, in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make straight his paths. Can I just suggest to us this morning that, that in, in a time and in a, in a, in a lifetime where, where paths have been uh, continually being crossed, where, where differences of opinion have continually been uh, brought up against one another, that the Lord is straightening our paths, that as believers, uh, we are learning how to walk together uh, in our lane uh, without being an offense to one another, without becoming offended by one another, but allowing the Lord to speak to each of us uh, in his way for his purpose uh, for each life. Proverbs 16, verse 17 says, the highway of the upright turns aside from evil. Whoever guards his way preserves his life. And this morning, uh, as we are gathering together, we're talking about this highway of holiness. And Anne and I have been a part of uh, walking with a journey of, of many from around the world, uh, especially for the Isaiah 19 highway of holiness, but I know that beyond that uh, area of the Middle East that is now starting to walk together, he is also giving us this incredible opportunity to all walk together on this highway of holiness. And, and sometimes, you know, our, our past uh, uh, experiences of church and that, we've maybe wondered, will I be one of those that is able to pass on the, the highway of holiness? Who is holy enough to go there? Uh, what will be their identifying mark? And, and how do I personally prepare myself? We need to, to keep God's thoughts on his highway ever before us, remembering that Father God uh, is our Father. His love for us is perfect. And Jesus' blood that was shed just this past weekend as we remembered uh, on Good Friday, the beginning of, of this entire uh, Passover season, that his blood was shed for us to remit us from our sin. And then finally, as we are now on this journey of 50 days, we are going toward the 50th day after Easter Sunday, after Resurrection Day. We are going to Sunday, Pentecost Sunday, uh, June the 5th. And so we keep in the Lord's perspective on these things before us. We don't keep our religious uh, ways uh, as our boundaries, but we ask the Lord to remove those boundaries so that we can actually center in on his heart and his way. And, and when we do that, uh, we'll find out that sometimes, you know, our, our, our road will be a solitude road. We'll, we'll have a, a, a time of quietness where we're with the Lord. Other times, the, the road will have crowds thronging on it because we're a part of something that's, that's bigger than us, that's a part of the corporate body, maybe even the global body of Christ coming together. And still other times, there will be times where it is not just solitude, but where you actually feel that you're all alone walking on a path. And each of these places are valid. And, and I want you to know that although you feel alone and maybe no one is walking with you, uh, Christ will never leave you. He will never forsake you. And so my, my ex exhortation to you this morning, and, and I'm going to let Anne jump in in a second here, but as we're on this journey, as we're on this, uh, this journey to a highway of holiness, let's just remember that God's love is, is more than enough. And don't ever 
have the thought that it'll be too self-sacrificing, that it'll be too difficult. I want you to know that, that uh, at the end of the journey, uh, we will all receive the victor's crown. And, and for many of us, for, for many years, we have, we've been excited about that crown. But could I suggest to you that even just this last week, uh, hundreds of us gathered in the Middle East, uh, and we were crowning Christ, Lord and King over all. That, that his kingship uh, was upon our nations, upon our lives, upon the fellowships that we are a part of. And so now, now we come to that glorious place where we cast our crown back before him. In the midst of receiving this crown, when we see him face to face, uh, because of our journey on this highway of holiness, we will be able to step into the place where we cast our crown before him. Uh, I am grateful, so grateful, that as we do that, he is, he is uh, bringing us uh, to a place of surrender, a place of perseverance, and a place of life in him. For those of you, you know, who have been around me at any amount of time, you know that I have, what, you know, we all have our little hobby horse, but one of my little hobby horses is the study out of Klassel, Germany, where they found that when we literally go into a thanksgiving appreciation mode, that literally it changes our frequency. The light photons in you goes from 20 photons per second to 100,000 and it emanates out six feet. So as I am in my place of appreciation of what Christ has done for me, especially coming in or just coming off of this, um, Holy Week, this uh, Good Friday, and now after we've passed Resurrection Sunday, so much appreciation to what the Lord did for us. Mm -hmm. So much appreciation. So as I'm in that, I am affecting those around me as I go into that place of that place of encounter with the Lord, my heart swelling with appreciation for all that my Lord did for me on um it's going down into, um, you know, down into the pit and literally then being resurrected on good on Easter Sunday. What what appreciation swells in my heart? And I know that that affects my atmosphere. So I'm excited as we are journeying to Pentecost, because we know that there was a point in that journey where, again, the disciples were very, very discouraged. And yet. Even in the discouragement, the Lord broke through. And we know that, you know, as we're journeying to Pentecost, there was a power, a dunamis that came upon them. And so in our journey together, we're setting our eyes on a prize, on that which where a comforter came. And so we are going to also celebrate that on this road as we're journeying together, just as there was a journey for the disciples when they had that understanding that yes, Jesus was resurrected, the Lord that they had said, he had said to them, I will go away, you know, for three days. And he came back to them and their hearts were filled. And I just am excited to journey together on this road down as we go forward to Pentecost. And, you know, growing up, um, reading the Isaiah passage of the highway of holiness, uh, I think many of us were left wondering, will I ever be good enough? Will I ever be holy enough uh, to be a part of that road? And my journey has, has been one where I realize now that, that it is not my holiness, but it's his holiness rising up in me. It's his life rising up in me. And so if you have... Uh, uh, in your journey, if you have at all felt, I'll never be enough, I'll never measure up, God will never be able to bless me, I'll never be a part of that company. I just want to uh, just encourage you this morning that in fact, we are all in this journey, we're all on this process, 
and he is the one who is making us righteous and making us holy. It is your perseverance. It is your, your stick-to-itiveness that is going to, uh, when you fall down, you get back up. When you're riding your bike and you fall off, you, you get back up on your bike. When we do those things, that is what builds the character of his holiness in us. And, and our choice to say yes uh, even even in difficult times, is going to bring us to the place that, in fact, we are on that highway of holiness. So, and our yes is a sweet-smelling savor to the Lord. Hmm. So in your journey, when you're feeling discouraged or you're not feeling that it's going the way you want, as you step into that yes, you're giving the Lord your yes, it is a sweet-smelling savor. But then again, as you say your yes, and you are that sweet smelling savor, savor that thankfulness that then will come into your heart as he is uh, having you come forward, knowing that you're really joining with so many of the kingdom that are saying in these days, yes, Lord, whatever you have, I want. Everything you have for me is what I want. And I touched on the, the scripture yesterday in John chapter 21. Where, uh, where Peter has had his uh, three yeses to the Lord uh, after the Lord asking him, do you love my sheep? And then Peter said, well, what about that other guy? And that other guy was the apostle John. And John uh, was, was walking on his path. And, and it became very clear that uh, Peter wanted to know if John was going to have to walk the same way as Peter was going to have to walk. As you're on this journey, uh, Jesus was very clear to Peter. He said, Peter, don't worry about him. You follow me. And so as you're on this journey of, of the highway of God's holiness, I want to encourage you that, in fact, um, sometimes you will walk alone. Sometimes you'll have throngs of people around you, but you will never actually uh, miss the mark because God will always be with you. So though you might feel alone, uh, he will be always with you. Those who finish this course uh, will be given a victor's crown. I, I find that um, I'm just picking out a couple of the highlights of, of the meditation that, that I wrote. Uh, interesting that we're, we receive a victor's crown because we finish the race. We, 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 we go the distance with the Lord on this journey. But uh, it's interesting that that as we receive his crown, the first thing that we'll do is when we see him face to face is we'll take that crown and we'll cast it back toward him. I, I just think it's amazing that, that we end up working so hard uh, in our own well-being to try and, and be something for God. And then when we see him, uh, he, will, he will, will just cast everything that we are back to him. That's the joy that we're going to have as we're on this journey. And, you know, uh, uh, a number of, of our friends were, were in the Middle East in these last few days, and uh, we, we crowned him from the Middle East. We crowned Christ Lord of all, uh, Lord of all of circumstances, Lord of all of the situations, uh, whether, whether we like certain circumstances of life or not, uh, we crowned him Lord of all, and, and Anne's thought on, on the photons rising up when we have gratitude. Uh, and just tell us the, the, the difference, the variance between when you're giving thanks and when you're not giving thanks. I, you told about the, the thing going six feet out. That's my height. I, I like that. But uh, uh, what about, what, about how, what is the ratio? Because this will help people understand. Um, there is a difference actually be, be in being having gratitude and having appreciation. So gratitude is a place or a state of I'm thankful for something, but appreciation goes deeper. It is something that literally when you have been appreciative of something, my husband Mike was to come with a beautiful Starbucks uh, latte for me, my heart would swell with some gratitude. But as I sit and I savor that, that lovely latte, I'm not giving Starbucks a plug here, but if I was to savor that, I go into a place of appreciation. And when you go into a place of appreciation, there is a place where you actually can feel that in your chest. When that happens, 
you go if they were to be able to put you into a special machine and literally um, scan you for the amount of light emitting from you, <clears throat> you would see that it's 20 photons per second. But when we literally go into that place of appreciation, of appreciation it literally changes to 120, uh, sorry, 100,000 per second instantly. And so that emanates out six feet. So wow. as you are, have gratitude, allow, <clears throat> as if I was sitting with my coffee, sitting with my latte, let that settle in. Let that gratitude literally settle into appreciation. Mm. There is a state. And so as we've come off of all that we have come through with Good Friday and Easter Sunday on this journey towards Pentecost, what can you settle into? What is it that as you think of what Christ did for you, as you were sitting there, maybe just with your tea, you're looking out the window, you've gone for a walk. What is it that settles into you that now you become not just thankful for it, not just having gratitude, but literally settling into an appreciation mm. of what the Lord has done for you? I hope that wow. gives some clarity, Mike. Well, from 20 photons to 100,000 photons, uh, that just, that's uh, exponential growth right there. And, and so for me, uh, what, is, what is the tie back between appreciation and gratitude and this highway of holiness? Uh, parts of the journey that we're on won't be favorable. They won't be easy. Um, they will be filled with challenge. And that's why we're even calling this uh, journey, this 50 days to your Pentecost challenge, because we know that the Lord is going to be challenging our heart. And so as a foundation, when we have this, this attitude of gratitude, this appreciation that is welling up from within us, no matter the circumstance that we're facing, uh, this will be the, the mark of the Lord upon us as we step into the fullness of Pentecost. The other thing that I find amazing is that the, the disciples, the 120, 500 started out in the upper room, but as the day of Pentecost came to its fullness, there was 120 that were there. Um, not everyone will choose uh, to continue on uh, this this path this this way it doesn't mean that the the Lord isn't going to love them that they're still not a part of the kingdom but this fullness that we're pressing for in these days is is for those who will who will allow a, an appreciation to arise in their heart no matter their circumstance no matter the difficulty we've got friends in some nations that that um, they meet literally hidden uh, because they don't have the openness to be able to gather together. We in the in the West, we have this freedom. We need to learn how to be full of gratitude in this journey of ours towards the fullness of God so that that gratitude is emanating. Could it be, could it be that these this gratitude that was upon the uh the, the 120 as they burst out of that upper room. And not only were they filled with the Holy Spirit, but they were filled with this, this appreciation for what God had done. These, these ones that had gone into a room that were, were so afraid, they locked the door uh, because they didn't know what was going to happen. They were in a very hostile situation, but in the midst of it, Holy Spirit came upon them. Their hearts had settled with gratitude, with appreciation. And now, not only is Holy Spirit ministering through them as, as the day of Pentecost has come to completion, but they're also now uh, emanating this life of joy because of gratitude and appreciation in their heart. So as we are walking through these days, uh, as you are journeying uh, through these days, our prayer for you is that uh, as you have set your feet on this path, uh, our, our prayer for you is that you are going to know the grace of God, the, the, have the appreciation for the little things in life that will continue to, to raise up your heart so that your heart will be set on that which the Father is wanting to do.
Any other thoughts, Ann? Yeah, just to really, um, to really encourage the thought that came to me as you were talking was um, how that um, the disciples, you know, when they talked with Jesus on the Emmaus road, they said to one another, they didn't really maybe recognize that it was him, but they said, didn't our hearts burn with one another? So that's the other thing in this appreciation. I really want to encourage us to really um, let's step it up and really chat with one another, you know, to really encourage not just your own heart, but encourage those around you. So as you have been in this time of, of reflecting on what the Lord has done for you, and we're walking on this journey, we're walking on this highway of holiness, I really want to encourage myself first <laughs> to really step it up and in this challenge model time to challenge you, challenge myself, to literally encourage one another. So I just want to encourage you, Mike, that, you know, in doing this challenge, thank you. I, I'm appreciative of it. I'm thankful that we get to dialogue and we get to walk. Um, and those of us who are jumping on with you, those of us who are journeying together, we get to walk from Easter now to Pentecost on that journey. And we're going to maybe challenge ourselves because we may bump into some same kind of things that possibly the disciples in the upper room bumped into some of the doubts, some of the fears, but they had each other. They were locked in that place, mm. right? They journeyed together and they were locked in. So lock in, step in with someone else, encourage one another. So that appreciation of what I have can now be shared, can be spilled over to Mike, can be spilled over to someone that's journeying with me on and our group here, this challenge group of the 50 days to Pentecost. So good. Um, for some of you that might be watching by Facebook or by YouTube, um, you, you've stumbled upon us. We welcome you. We're grateful that you're with us today. Um, we are going through a, a prayer guide, 50 days to your Pentecost. And uh, the challenge that we're putting before us is that we would journey together for about 30 minutes each day uh, as we go toward June the 5th, Pentecost Sunday. And uh, if you would like to uh, participate, uh, you, can, you can email us at admin at cfyc.org. That's admin at cfyc.org. Uh, you can ask for the printed copy, or you can ask to be on our uh, mail list, and you will get in your inbox every morning your daily uh, devotion with uh, with thoughts and, and scriptures and all of that. You know, uh, uh, Ann and I are, are very privileged. Uh, uh, we walk with such a variety of people. Uh, you know, Ann's background in counseling and coaching, when she comes on with me, uh, is completely different than mine. Uh, but we're going to have some guests uh, from around the world joining us. Uh, they will bring uh, cultural perspectives. They're going to bring kingdom perspective. Uh, they, they will be from the Middle East, uh, from Europe, from across North America, uh, Africa. We are just looking forward, actually Asia also. Uh, we just look forward to you being able to join with us uh, as they bring their part uh, of encouragement, as they bring their part uh, of the puzzle, so that as we come to the fullness of the day of Pentecost, we will all be empowered with great grace, with his in intimate love, and we will be those ones whose light is shining out like a hundred thousand light photons. And would you uh, would you close us out with prayer as we uh, uh, end today? Sure. Father, thank you for this journey that we are on, and thank you, Lord Jesus, for being that sacrificial lamb and thank you lord jesus that you were not just the lamb who was slain but you are our lord our savior and that literally we get to celebrate lord what you did for us we have such appreciation for all you have done for us all you are putting um in our path in our hands as we um come to this faith and walk our faith out with you. So thank you for this time. Thank you for everyone that has jumped on, on with us today. And I thank you that, 
Lord, we are going to be lights radiating out and, and literally impacting a world just as those early disciples did. So yeah. we just thank you for everything you're going to do on our journey to Pentecost to June the 5th. We give you all the praise and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We'll see you again tomorrow at 9 a.m. Mountain Time. Blessings to you all. Have a wonderful day. Goodbye.